Welcome to Start With Hello, conversations about disability. Okay, in this episode, we are discussing one of our favorite resources. And I don't know, you're probably like me. Anytime we talk about one of our resources, it's, hey, this is one of our favorite resources. Uh, we They're all our favorite. I don't think that would be, you know, that would be a fun podcast. Let's rank our, fa- our favorite favorite resources just to see what each other would come up with. But this one is disability is beautiful. And if you've been over to the website, you can read, you can read why we wanted to create this. And obviously with just about anything relating to disability, there's limited options. And so for what seems like forever, it's been pretty much impossible to find a catalog just of high quality images about and from the disability community until now, right? So we wanted to hop on and talk about this, but I wanted to hear it from you as to why you personally feel that this is such an important resource. Well, I think, I think if we trace back kind of a couple of years, uh, as we were kind of beating our head against the wall, trying to find resources, uh, I think I think the thing that we kept running into is there's just not equal representation of people with disabilities in media, whether that be on TV, whether that be in movies, whether that be you know modeling in a magazine. Um, so so when we're creating resources, because we create a ton of resources, and we're searching for for images of people with disabilities, uh, and we came up with the same two every time we did a search a uh, cute little girl with down syndrome with hand paint um on her on her fingers finger paint on her hands uh and uh and then the the young man and his father kind of staring into each other's eyes uh that that's the only images that we came up with and and those aren't bad images um obviously not uh, almost every disability organization has used one or both of those organizations and we did uh but uh it's it's kind of like understanding the statistics about disabilities. The World Health Organization says that there are over 1.5 billion people that live with disabilities, and and that's like an overwhelming number. So if there's that many people that live with a disability, why can't we find an image, a high quality image of someone with a disability, um, to use in different media platforms? We were frustrated, and I don't know if we were frustrated about it. Uh, certainly other people were frustrated about it too. So uh, it was one of those things that I, I remember our conversation a couple of years ago. And, uh, and we said, we said, uh, well, you, you know, we, we've got a couple options. Uh, we can just be frustrated and throw up our hands and say, there's nothing that we can do about it. Or uh, we can be frustrated and we can say, well, I hope somebody else does something about it. Or, and this is the option that we chose, we can be frustrated and we can do something about it. Uh, and, and that's kind of where, where disability is beautiful kind of, kind of was birthed was out of frustration. And I think that's where, I think that's where a lot of invention comes from is, is, is from frustrations and uh, just the frustration of there not being equal representation of images of people that live with disabilities. And uh, so uh, we knew that we needed it, uh, so we knew that other people would need it. And, uh, and and moreover than that, it's just we wanted to celebrate. I mean, you just look at the look at the name of the resource, Disability is Beautiful. We wanted to celebrate the beauty that is in disability. And I know that's like countercultural. Uh, that's not what the world believes about disability, uh, but that's what we believe that God believes about disability. Uh, and people with disabilities. When 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 you look at Psalm one uh, thirty nine, and it says that we are, you know, beautifully and wonderfully and fearfully made. Uh, you know, it doesn't say that you're only, you know, beautifully, wonderfully, fearfully made if you don't have a disability. There's no asterisk there. Uh, so we believe that God believes uh, that all people, including people with disabilities, are beautiful. And we want to celebrate that beauty and and kind of right the wrong of there not being equal representation of people with disabilities in in the world of media, specifically uh, stock photography. So kind of a long answer, but uh, 
uh, you know, just kind of reliving some of those those thoughts, uh, frustrations, dreams that we had about this resource. Yeah, and I, I agree. I think we were we were probably not unique in the fact that if you're a church or really if you're an organization that's like, you know, say, hey, we just got started. You're going to need you're going to need documents. You're going to need marketing material. You're going to need a website. You're going to need a social media presence. And if you've just gotten started, you don't have a lot of, that's where we ran up against. We didn't have a lot of updated material and we were like, well, where are we going to go get it? And, and yeah, you're right. We used, and I think we just refreshed our first steps and next steps documents, uh, the free one page guides, because that was one of the reasons we had used some, what we considered a little outdated photos. And again, there's nothing wrong with those, but we, now we have access to disability is beautiful. So we wanted to go pull from that, from that catalog. And I, I like scrolling through the site and think, um, I don't think I'm putting you on the spot here to, to say, like, I know that you pull this website up on a regular basis and look to see things that have been added or up, updated to it. And I, obviously it's growing and we're going to continue to grow it. And it's really neat seeing just a variety of images. But if you're, let's say you've never heard about this and you're like, Hey, well, this sounds great. Um, am I paying for pictures? Do I have to buy an account to law? Is there like a monthly fee? Uh, do I have to have Ryan Wolf come and notarize my document saying that I'm no. officially authorized? Um, if you want to, yeah, we'll probably, you know what? We will, <laughs> we will pay. That would be kind of funny to fly Ryan in with a, a stamp. But so how can, how can these images be used and what, what can they be used in? Oh man. Uh, there is an endless, uh, array of opportunities to use these images uh, you say that i pull it up often i do every time uh i create a training every time i write curriculum which is often anytime we create a resource i'm pulling up this ability is beautiful and i'm saying okay what image would be perfect for this resource whether it's curriculum whether it's a, a handout that we're printing whether it's a, a training that we're doing for a church or an organization um so you, I mean, you can add them in presentations that you're doing, anything that you're printing, you know, throw it on a poster, uh, social media posts that you're, you're making. I know, Jason, you use them on social media a ton when you're, you're creating posts to use online. Um, really, the, the, uh, the opportunities are, are endless. And one of the things that I love the most is when I see other disability organizations that are making a social media post or they're, they're relaunching you know, their website. And uh, and we see some familiar images from Disability is Beautiful. I just think that that's really, really, um, you know, it, it warms my heart because the the resource is doing what it was intended to do. And and you ask, you know, do you do you need to to pay anything to have a monthly subscription or pay per image? Uh, if you go to almost every other stock photography website, yes, you have to pay. Uh, but that's one of the things that I love so much about Disability is Beautiful is the fact that it's a free resource. You don't have to pay. You don't have to have monthly subscription. You don't have to pay per, uh, per image that you download. It's all free. Uh, and, and that's just, that's just a wonderful thing to, to again, remove some of those barriers, uh, to, to doing things in a high quality way. Uh, just the fact that we've been able to create this resource and make it available for free to everyone. Uh, I think it's just awesome. Uh, no, no special license agreements, nothing. Um, the only thing you do need is if you're uploading an image uh, of an individual with a disability is, is, uh, is their consent, their agreement, their signature, um, that type of thing. But every other aspect of this is free to use in, in any way, um, any way that is, um, let's say, honoring to the individual um, and, uh, and to the Lord. So, so yeah. We love it. It's free. You can use it in so many different ways. And I think the way that we set it up, um, my experience having done, you know, graphic design and marketing for years, anytime I came across a resource that had high quality free images or whatever it was, I would bookmark it. And there used to be a time where 
I would go through and try and download every single thing possible thinking, well, at some point they're going to put a paywall on this or, you know, I'm not going to be able to access it. I'm going to download every single thing that I can. And one of the things and any, I'm sure any designer out there can relate to this is you, you do a search and you come across this resource and you find you're like, oh, wow, this is really cool. I'm so glad that they have this. And it'll say, click here to download. So you click there and then it takes you to another website. And that website has 50 different pop-ups on it. And the whole page seems like it's designed to get you to click anywhere except where you need to, to download it. And then when you finally figure out where to download it, it takes you to another site and then you have to create a free account. And it's just, it's uh, very, very frustrating. And when you're just trying to create a project and you want something worthwhile, you don't need all of that. And I, I love that this is very streamlined. If you're familiar with sites like Pexels and Unsplash, if you see an image or video, you just click on it and download it. And we've, we've done that. And there's, a, there's an option to give credit back to the, the creator, the person that's uploaded the thing, which is, which is helpful. But just the, the ease of access is, I think, pretty important because we don't, we don't want to shuffle you off through a series of links that we're trying to run ads on or things of that nature. But to, to go back to the types of images, I know we've talked about this in the past where if you look up disability and I, I don't, I, I don't know, part of me kind of wonders, I should have looked that up before we even started talking about this. I wonder if it's still the same, but a lot of what we found, like you said, was the girl with the paint on her hands and it was a really happy image. But a lot of what you see is when you look up disability is uh, wheelchairs. That's, primarily the the visual that you expect to see and you know that's not representative of the whole community right and i think it gives people a quick way to associate okay disability wheelchair i, I kind of understand that but it's it's definitely not the only thing so what are some other stereotypes or stigmas uh, have you come across any stereotypes or stigmas surrounding stock photography and disability? Absolutely. Uh, I, I think when we've done some searches and, and another one of the reasons why we wanted to create this resource is uh, you, you, you type in disability um, in, in one of these stock photography websites and inevitably it's a wheelchair. Uh, inevitably the person seems like really sad um, or, you know, depressed or they're in a dark room or, or they're all alone and it just it puts a disability in in such a negative light uh and and so that and, and you know we don't believe necessarily that that is everyone's experience with disability um you know sure sure there are uh, some struggles with disability but that's not that's not the uh, entire story and uh, that seems to be some of the stigma that you see when you're doing searches uh for that I, you know there, there are a lot of different reasons for that you know if you think about what is the symbol for disability you know it's you know the handicap placard has a person with a wheelchair in it every handicap parking space has a sign with a wheelchair on it so it's just what people associate disability with but uh you know some other statistics when you think about uh 80 of all disabilities can't be seen uh with the naked eye so you can't always see disability uh, it's not always right there in front of you so that's why i think you see a lot of uh whether it be a child with Down syndrome or someone in a wheelchair. I think that's a lot of the reasons why is it's just, you know, that's what people have been taught to think about what disability looks like. But that's, that's an, another one of the reasons why I love disability is beautiful because it gives you a more clear picture. You know, I, I think the, the children with Down syndrome, uh, the wheelchair users, those are a few pieces, but not the entire puzzle. And uh, so that's, that's what, what I love about it. Um, so yeah, so many, so many, stereotypes and stigmas uh, that give you an incomplete picture. And uh, I hope that we can, we can overcome some of those negative stereotypes and stigmas. Now I like, I liked that word struggle and it made me, it made me quickly go back and think about the pictures that I know are up there. And I think that's one of the things that's really cool about it. It's not depicting it's not a whole library of people struggling. It's people living their life. It's people worshiping in service. It's 
fitness. It's people having fun with family. It's somebody, I think there's one of somebody buying something on, on the phone and they're using a credit card or something. It's just activities that you know, it's life that people are, are doing. And that's, I think that's been so important to, to show instead of the, like you said, uh, like a stigma or a stereotype of uh, a struggle. And, you know, I, I love that that's been, you know, incorporated in, into this, this mission. And I think it, it should obviously go without saying that we want this to, we want Disability is Beautiful to have, you know, the most ex extensive and comprehensive library that we could possibly ever imagine. So I'm wondering, because I know I've got like a personal list of things. Uh, are there any photos or even like, I, I would say topics, categories, collections, however you want to word it, or anything that you would love to see more of start appearing on the website? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think at this point we have, you know, a lot of what you would think of like photos, you know, I don't want to say the, the typical family photo where you're posed, you're smiling. Uh, and those are great. Those are great photos, but I would love to see some more everyday life activities. Uh, I think you mentioned that just a minute ago. Uh, it, it'd be great to have that because again, I think that overcomes a, a negative stereotype that, you know, people with disabilities only ever sit at home all alone, isolated and depressed. Um, yeah, that is some people's experience, um, but it's not everyone's experience. Uh, people with disabilities live fruitful lives. Uh, they have jobs. They are in relationships. They do everything that everyone else does. So I would love to see just everyday life, work, travel, um, just a good sampling of of what we all do and experience in life. Uh, so so yeah, I would just I would love to see see more of that. Um, I did, I think, um, uh, early on after our launch of Disability is Beautiful, uh, have someone emailed and, uh, and they said, everybody I see on your website is smiling. Um, and I'm like, I'm like, is this a compliment or a critique? I wasn't sure. Uh, as, and then I continued to read on it and, and, uh, from this person's perspective, um, they thought, you know what? If everyone's happy all the time, that's not an accurate depiction either. And I, you know, I thought, you know what? There's a lot of truth to that because none of us yeah. are happy. None of us we, are happy. We hear all that a lot time. about Down syndrome, right? Like everybody. That's a one of my friends. She said that's a myth. Like her son, she's like, no, you. He may give you a hug every time you see him, but he is not always happy. He is. He right. has moods, and I think that's a that's a good point. The mm -hmm. happiness, but it's. That also presents a, a challenge in of itself. It's you know, hey, while you're crying or you're in the middle of a meltdown, let me get a let me get the DSLR out because I really need to upload that to uh, Disability is Beautiful, right? Yeah, I, I, and I think I think I think some of those images are needed. Obviously, you want to be careful and sensitive to some of those moments, but uh, maybe it's more of you know, you're asking someone to smile for a picture, uh, but you can also ask someone to frown for a picture or to make a scared face for a picture or any of the wide array of emotions that we all experience. And, and I think a photo shoot uh, with an array of emotions, I think would be something that would be awesome to have on, on disabilities beautiful because we all experience all of those emotions and uh, to be able to depict those um, in a high quality way would be a great resource. Yeah. High quality and, and respectable. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, did we just, you just typed up two very helpful one page doc resources on our website about sexual relationships. And, you know, this would be a great opportunity to have something like that, but you'd want to do it in a respectful way. Can you show two individuals with, with disabilities in a relationship? And, I've seen stock for um I've seen stock photography where it's clear they're trying to depict a violent maybe a violent or volatile situation somebody yelling a a wife yelling at a husband or vice versa and you, you know in the back of my mind I know it's staged but some of those things are really helpful like you know really one of the heartbreaking images that I found was on our resource about 
um, when you suspect abuse or neglect, there's, I, I want to say it's a senior citizen and she's like kind of cowering and she's being yelled at. And the only reason that I can, there's two reasons I can use that. Number one, I feel like it, it conveys the sense of that document, but also in the back of my mind, I'm like, I know they staged this, so she's okay. <laughs> Cause I just couldn't have, I wouldn't want to use it that way. So I think some of those, some of those staged photos, those would be great because it, it's a safe way and a respectable way to depict real life that we do get in arguments. We do get upset. We get our feelings hurt. We have relationships. We have, you know, real, real problems, but kind of to segue into the, the next question I wanted to ask you and I both know just how hard it can be if you're managing in a class or an event, there's so many moving parts, just, just teaching a Sunday school class. There's so much going on. It's not as easy as I'm going to sit up here and I'm going to go through my material and we're all going to go home. There's a lot of stuff that happens and thinking about taking pictures or video that kind of will be pushed off to the side because of everything else that comes up. It's, it's hard. So, and then that's not even thinking about, well, I got to make time to take photos. Oh yeah. They have to be creative and they have to be high quality. It can be really tough. So I wanted to ask, what are some ways that individuals, churches, companies, what are some ways that they could create content and contribute to Disability is Beautiful? For, for individuals, for, for parents and guardians, uh, loved ones that have individuals with disabilities in their lives or individuals with disabilities, uh, everyone has a smartphone now. Everyone's smartphone takes high resolution photos. And everybody has photos that are, you know, that you have put in your favorites folder on your phone. Um, I think the easiest way is to scroll through your favorites um, on your phone and think, this is an awesome resource that I could share with the world. Uh, the easiest way to do it is just create your own free account on Disability is Beautiful. And literally hit upload, and uh, and we'll we'll take care of the rest. You know, as long as you have the permissions of of the individuals uh, in the photos. Uh, so that's that's the easiest way to do it. Uh, you mentioned, you know, leading a class or being in a ministry. You're right. Uh, you struggle sometimes to have enough volunteers just to keep the room open, uh, and the thought of having someone there taking photos is 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 would be a luxury at, at best. Um, but I, I would challenge, I would challenge churches uh, to think differently about volunteering. Uh, any church that has done a night to shine or a prom, a Jesus prom, uh, one of the volunteer roles uh, for those big events is oh, there's always a photographer. Uh, that is a volunteer role, and uh, and I know a lot of larger churches now are embracing kind of the idea of having volunteer photographers, roaming photographers uh, that take pictures of worship services and things happening at church because social media has become so important has become such a great uh, way to uh, just communicate what your church does, uh, help people understand what's going on. Um, so I would say have that, have those roaming photographers. If your church already has one, uh, make their way through your ministry, uh, through your disability ministry. Give them permission to do that. Obviously, what comes with that is having permission from the families and the individuals within the ministry. Uh, they would have to sign a photograph, you know, a photograph, uh, you know, waiver, uh, which which is something that can e be easily done. Um, but yeah, think differently about volunteering. You know, have a volunteer position for photography. Um, and, and I think that's also an, a great open door for someone that may not feel comfortable volunteering in disability ministry, but they would feel comfortable walking around taking photos. And it's a great resource that your ministry needs uh, and that you can share with the world through disability is beautiful. So just a couple different ways uh, that you can contribute. And, and uh, again, it's free. Uh, just create an account and upload and uh, we take care of the rest. Yeah. And you mentioned the, the waiver, correct me if I'm wrong, but we made that waiver. Some churches are like, well, great. There's another thing that we need that we don't have. 
we made that available as a word document that you can edit. There's a form package. Mm -hmm. So I can, I'll link that on the website, you know, so if you stumble across this, you can easily find it. But I love the idea of a roaming photographer and I was hanging out with my friend, Sam, Sam has down syndrome and I was hanging out with him and we were at the park and he expressed an interest in learning a little bit more about photography. He loved it. So we grabbed some cameras and we went and had some coffee and we just took pictures and I had a great time. And he expressed that there's a local organization here that he belongs to and he loves taking pictures for them. And I thought, well, you need to come take pictures at rise fitness. So, and those who don't know rise is an inclusive fitness program based here in Louisville, Kentucky. And now what he does is part of his job is he will show up an hour early and he photographs one of the classes and then he stays and he works out and we've bought him a shirt that says official photographer, uh, event staff. And he very proud to have that shirt. It was so great to give it to him, but it's really, it's another opportunity for the nothing for us without us mantra. And it gives other people a, a sense of responsibility. It's very much a needed role. I like this because it's not saying, well, we just want to give you some busy work so we can feel good about ourselves. No, this is a valuable thing. Sam's going to be compensated for his time. It's a valuable thing to, to communicate this and not, so you've got pictures for social media and then you can help create things and upload them to Disability is Beautiful so that other ministries getting started or need something unique can have that. And then there's that added bonus of knowing that Sam took these pictures. And that's really cool for me. But I wanted to talk just for a second about long term with the website. And as this resource and the catalog grows, do you have any other plans that you would love to see implemented beyond? just growing the catalog uh we've got some pretty pretty big dreams and uh and i think some of those things will take place and that's timing so i, I don't want to necessarily throw something out there and, and have someone say well you said uh that this this uh, new resource would be available at a certain time so um i'm going to keep some of that under your hat um but uh two things that i would love to to kind of throw out there that uh, are dreams of the website and i think they are uh, obtainable here in in the the near future is is to have paid contributors uh, specifically uh, contributors uh, that that live with disability uh, that are you know that have a disability that could be like featured contributors to disability is beautiful uh, whether it be photographers models um, you know whatever that would look like I, I'd love to see that happen. Um, the other thing that I would love to see happen is to have uh, some very part-time aid support staff uh, to give you kind of an idea of what happens when someone submits a photo or uploads a photo. Obviously, uh, we get an email notification of that. Then we have to go into the website. We have to preview the image and make sure that obviously that the image is, you know, done in the right light is, you know, is not giving a negative, uh, you know, been on stability or make sure it's not degrading or inappropriate uh so you know we have to review it uh and then we have to kind of uh, you know we have to add it to the website so a little bit a little bit of work there um but i would love to see disability is beautiful grow to the point where uh it becomes something that you and i can't handle as far as like something that we have to do as far as our jobs that we have to hand it off uh, to a support staff position and and purposely i would want to hire individuals with disabilities to be able to handle that uh as that comes in um you know as the images come in on a you know daily weekly monthly basis uh and i believe that that is that too is an attainable thing um you know what what do we need for that to happen uh, we need funding uh, you know if 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 you love our resource disability is beautiful uh you can make a donation to it. Uh, if you would love to see us be able to hire uh, people as contributors or support staff to run the website, uh, you know, we're, we're searching for grants. If you know of grants that are available, let us know. Um, or if you just want to make that donation to help us take that next step, 
uh, and making this an even more amazing resource, uh, you can help uh, by making a donation. So just to, to recap, you're going to hire five full-time remote positions by the end of the week. No, no. And I'm, I'm going to read off your cell phone number here so no, that people no, can text no. your application. <laughs> No. <laughs> and then no. I knew Ryan would be like, and this is why we stopped the podcast. <laughs> no. Is <laughs> he put my personal? No, I think it's a good thing. And I think we've talked about that like when we initially set this up, that we'd love to grow it to that point where we we could hire a support staff just for this and somebody to handle customer support, like with emails and things and pay contributors and models. I think that's a really, a really good thing. And but that offers the chance for people to work with real people. It kind of leads to my next question regarding AI. And I'm curious, do you think AI will, could, should not have a larger role or any role? How do, how do you see AI working within stock photography and, dis, and disability is beautiful in general? That is an entire episode on its own. Uh, let me give you the short of it as far as kind of my feelings toward it. Um, I, I believe that AI will have a role in stock photography. Um, if you go to Disability is Beautiful right now, um, you'll find some AI images on there. Um, it's my personal feeling that AI should never be the prominent contributor to stock photography. Uh, it's my opinion that AI should be a gap filler. Um, so what I mean by that is, all right, we've got a lot of great images on certain different topics or, or different, you know, areas of everyday life, but we're missing something. There's just something we don't have. We've not been able to get, uh, okay, let's turn to AI and fill some of those gaps. So I think it'll have a role. Uh, I think it can be a positive. Uh, if kept in check and used more as a gap filler than as a prominent contributor. So I guess that's my kind of two cents on it. Um, but I yeah, think, I think that we, could would, be... we both agree. We would rather have obviously real people. You know, I would, I would, I would much rather have a photo by Sam taking of somebody else with a disability rather than allow AI to create it. And there's, you know, like you said, this, this this could be a whole nother episode entirely, you know, should we use AI? Should we not? And, and just my experience with it, it's not the end all be all, uh, for some reason, there seems to be this feeling among a lot of people where you just type in what you want. AI spits out this absolutely perfect image. And that is absolutely not the case. Like we've seen this on the, the few, the very few times that we've used it, we've come across very quickly its limitations where it leaves out like really important details of, I, I remember there was an image of a person using a wheelchair and all of the spokes, I think on one of the wheels was entirely gone. There was no support structure on it. It was like these floating wheels. Where did this happen? And randomly AI still has not figured out that uh, how many fingers are on a human hand typically. and you know, it's, it's, I, I, if I was going to depict an actual person with a limb difference, there's no way I would want to use AI. I think that would kind of be insulting to do that. And, and I would want to talk with them like, well, you know, how do you want this presented? What's respectful to you? What, Cause I don't know anything about that. And to, to get that kind of connection and then upload it. But yeah. And we, we've got some AI images up there and, and that is basically how we've used them. It's like, well, we created this and this would be a great image if you're a designer to screen it back in the background and overlay text on top of it for like a, a brochure or a flyer. And it gives you the vibe of like a classroom kind of sense, but it's definitely not meant to be like have the, the spotlight on it. So I think there's some uses for it, but I think we're both on the same page that we would, at the end of the day, we'd much rather have, um, much rather have a real person in the the photo. So you and when you were answering that last question, you also mentioned, great, if you want to see us be able to do this, you can help donate. So I'm curious, 
could, what are the ways, what are other ways that anybody listening to this could say, well, I'm a terrible photographer. And if I uploaded anything, it would shut your website down. So, but I will, I believe in this. So how could I, how could I support disability is beautiful outside of just uploading photos? Well, we mentioned kind of the monetary donations to help us grow and to be able to hire people uh, with disabilities to help us run uh, this awesome resource. Um, but outside of that, man, we just, we just need people to use it, um, use it in your ministry. Make sure, you know, one of the reasons, the first question that we, we tackled was we want equal representation of people with disabilities uh, everywhere, whether that's, you know, in media, in movies and TV. Uh, specifically, this resource obviously is mainly going to be used in, in media, social media, print materials, uh, things like that. Uh, so my challenge would be for people, let people that live with disability, that have a disability, um, be represented equally. Uh, and that starts with you using them uh, in your print materials, in your social media posts, when you need an image, when you're creating a website, uh, you know, when you're, you're writing a, you know, a training material and you need an image, go grab one from Disability is Beautiful um, and, and use those images to, to show the world, again, uh, that Disability is not all, it's not ugly, negative. It's not. It's not all, you know, the the awful things that the world says about disability. So it just we just need people to use it. Um, if if you're not in a role where you use, you know, media and images, uh, share about it. You know, get get on social media and just make a post and just say, hey, I ran across this awesome resource. Disability is beautiful. Check it out, and and put the link there. Um, you know, that would be a great way to help support, uh, what we do, uh, is, is just help it getting the word out. So, so yeah, so many different ways, uh, that people can be a part of it without having to upload a photo. Uh, so yeah, I, I just, those are a couple of different ways. Yeah. I think just to reiterate what we said at the very beginning, this is one of our favorite resources and it's anytime we get an email, like we're super excited, kind of like when somebody downloads you know, one of our resources or especially like when they has the same effect of like when somebody downloads or purchases one of the baptism resources, we just get really excited about it. So disability is beautiful.com is where you need to go. You can create a free account. You can download free photos. Uh, there is no limit on how many you can download. And there are links to where to find Disability is beautiful on social media. There's some slightly different names depending on what platform you're on, but we would appreciate it if you went over. Just upload a single photo and then find us online and tag us and let us know how you've used these. I, I personally, I would love to see all the different projects. You know, is it a billboard? Is it a flyer? Is it a PowerPoint? No matter where it is. I'd love to see the the final product because it, it just shows how valuable of a resource this is. So until next time. Disability in the Church, the nation's largest disability ministry conference, is coming to Orlando May 1st through 3rd. Join key ministry and hundreds of ministry leaders for networking, training, collaboration and innovation with two full days of sessions plus an optional half day of ministry intensives. This year you can add up to five value-added events to your registration ticket at no charge, including a behind-the-scenes look at Make em Smile Orlando hosted by Nathaniel's Hope. Visit keyministry.org slash DATC2024 for the complete schedule and access to the online registration. We'll see you in Orlando this May.